Hey, and welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards the singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. And this is our 50th episode. Fuck yeah. Fuck yes. Oh, Holy shit. yeah. We've been doing this for ages, and in the spirit of celebration, we have cheap champagne called Yellow. So I think we'll open that right now and uh, during the celebrations, let's see how this goes. You have to, oh, like, I'm doing it with my laptop. That's a bad idea. There we go. <laughs> Have a glass? Fuck yeah. Oh yeah, you can hold both. <laughs> Let's do it. So yeah, uh, welcome to High 45. We are <laughs> so ecstatic to have done 50 episodes now. It has been over a year. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's pretty good. And uh, yeah, hell of, a, hell of a week this week. The Discovery did its final launch. Oh sorry. shit, we're going through the stories, okay? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying roughly what's there. Whatever. Well, I'm pouring it, so. Dude, cheers dude, to, to you guys, to you guys. Yeah, to you guys. I Thank know you. many of you have watched it since episode one, so cheers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dude, here's to 50. Oh, that's here's not to Ghostbusters. Tasty. Yeah, it's not a, not a good one, but here's to that. I think I'll fill it up as it goes through. Yep. It's going to be rather a relaxed episode, a little bit tipsy. So. Yeah, that's Ghostbusters. <laughs> Indeed. Plus, we're going to have to pay Ghostbusters a lot of money now. Oh, I know. It's oh, true, man. Fuck them. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. I think, yeah, whatever. <sighs> well, yeah. we'll go through the stories. Uh... To High 45, man. Yeah, to High 45. Lots of fun. And all it encompasses. Yeah. To the future! Yay! Yeah, that works! Yay! <laughs> to the future! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We dressed up in some of our past uh, costumes. Well, yeah. The gloves. Than, the gloves and the blazer. Yeah, because we were watching through some of our previous ones. Oh, we'll upload that at the end. Uh, there there's was some, some uh, fantastic stuff there's there. There's some messed up stuff in there. Yeah, we were very weird. I'm, like, I'm glad we haven't uploaded a lot of them. I know. <laughs> anyway. that's, that's a good, that was a good choice. <laughs> hey, yeah. Oh, man. We should get into it, I guess. Probably should. They'll be like, oh, what are these crazy bastards doing? <laughs> Just the whole episode is like, yeah! Yay! Look at us, we're great! Drink with us, come on! <laughs> you should drink with us, you should totally open a beer right yeah, now. Yeah, go get a... Great. No, no, stop now. Go get a champagne bottle. Yeah! Yeah. You know, you have it just... And then, no, no, no. Post a video of you drinking champagne, <laughs> and we'll put it on the next episode. Yes, yes we will. Promise you that. Will we? Yeah, why not? Okay. Fine. Hey, if anyone has the dedication to actually drink champagne, why not? <laughs> uh, okay, um... So, yes, oh, uh, some of the stories this week, kind of fantastic. Uh, my first one is uh, Discovery. Wow, it's kind of fantastic, not fantastic. Discovery has just done yeah. its final mission. No final more shuttle. shuttle mission. Yeah, no more shuttle. That's that sucks. It does suck. Anyway, what was yours? That thing looks positive? epic. I know. Um, first complete millimeter scale computing system to be implanted in the eye. Holy shit balls! That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty cool title. Too. That is kind of fantastic. Okay, this one here is amazing. Can't get over this. Just how incredible it is. We are going through Microsoft Research and the latest uh, breakthroughs they've had with uh, interface technology. That's kind of sweet. Sweet. And Kevin Kelly uh, Ooh, like maps KK. the price of the Kindle as it drops. Okay. Pretty cool. Here's to that. <laughs> we basically explain our entire stories in the titles. I we... know. I mean, you could actually just say, that, <laughs> yeah. well, that's pretty much it. But then you don't hear our extrapolation. Yeah. And that's the fun part, isn't it? That's the whole point of it, I guess. So who's starting the shuttle? Uh, yes, we'll start with Shuffle. And, awesome. uh, as we were saying, the story is pretty much being explained right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, the Space Shuttle Discovery has arrived at the International Space Station and successfully docked after having a little bit of trouble. Uh, and, uh, that's its final mission. A little bit of trouble. No, wait, what that happened? took them, like, an extra 15 minutes to actually oh, get the hatch no. open. It's important, because you need to give flavour to the story. It would have been funny if, like, the last one just blew up or something. It would really not have been. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been horrible. It's like, and that's why you don't use a shuttle. <laughs> this is how you get ants. <laughs> <laughs> love Archer. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's a little bit sad. Like, I've, I've always, um, loved the space program. Loved everything about it. Grew oh, up, like, We never got to our, our friend Jeff saw an actual launch. Oh, no. Like, work. <laughs> If you guys have seen an actual launch, you should explain it to us. Oh, I would have loved would have to have awesome. seen it. He went backpacking around America and went and saw one, so absolutely yeah. incredible. One fantastic thing about this, though, the what? Space Shuttle Discovery actually docked with the International Space Station over Australia, 220 miles above. Miles, so so there we go. Yay! Aussie pride! Aussie pride! <laughs> For an international space, space station, station run by the Americans. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Anyway, so uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a bit of a, a sad thing that uh, NASA's kind of, um, well, no, no more manned missions. Lots more robots, I guess. No more manned missions? No more manned missions. Oh, There'll no. be much less men. Uh. <laughs> Going where no man has gone before? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, so, I, I, I don't know what this means. Like, it, I think well, like we all were, the... We were going to talk about what is the future of space. What's happening yeah. now? What, what is, is the private industry actually going to take over? Is that what they're doing? Well, I think SpaceX's um, uh, actual craft yeah. can actually dock Elon with Elon Musk, the, man, I want to be that the guy. Bomb. That guy is wicked. I mean, they've been saying that he, he might be able to actually dock with the International Space Station, but it's a little tricky when it comes into SpaceX. I'm not sure exactly where yeah. they're up to or anything. I, I still think um, Virgin Galactic is the one to watch. Space tourism. Yeah. yeah, that's it. I mean, it's getting there. I still don't think the private companies are there yet, but they say it's going to be about 10 years until um, NASA has something they can do, but it doesn't even right. seem anything's in the pipeline, really. Okay. Fair I don't enough. know. It's a little <laughs> bit depressing, but if you want to go into space, talk to the Russians. You can be like one of the guys off NSYNC or Backstreet Boys. Oh, or no, no, one of those guys. I know one of them went up with Russia. Here's the NSYNC? Went up with... Yeah, yeah, one of the guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one of the, the pop star dudes. Oh, uh, that's just not cool. <laughs> hey, if, you, if you've got that much money for like doing well, singing, the, the, they you should go to space. People but... like that shouldn't get that much money for singing. Well, to go into space. It's a hell of a thing think to be of all the, Think of all the geeks and scientists and people who are actually, you know, ask yourself this. I'm sure he's intelligent, but ask yourself this. If you went into space, what benefit would you do to humanity? Or would you be just like, oh, floating bitches! <laughs> And just float around nonstop. You wouldn't do anything like of value. It'd be a joy trip. True. So then, why I do know. you deserve it more than a end single? Well, what about value? um, what's his name? The oh god, Corky. I... That's the one. Good, thank you. Wow, we have lived was... together for far too long. You can't give me any clues. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I was going to resort to saying like, oh, that guy with the wheelchair who speaks all funny. Right, George Tackett. So... <laughs> <laughs> He's our mascot. Uh, yeah, Hawking went up there, but come on, he saw the. He spot. didn't go up there. Yeah, he, oh, he went. No, no, he went no, in the, the, the He went in there. Peter, Peter the Diamandis's thing. He the, owns the, that. The vomit copter. Yeah, the vomit plane. Boom. Peter Peter Diamandis owns that. Really, I did not know that. Yeah, ha! he started that. That guy is wicked too. You should get one of those planes. It just flies into space. No, 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 it doesn't fly into space. It just actually does the oh, weightlessness no, 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 thing. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Like one of them. Yeah, you know, some pocket money from <laughs> next week or something. <laughs> Rob a bank. Anyway, uh, yeah. tell us what you think, like, I don't know, it's sad that the space program's going there, but I'm kind of glad they're using robots, because there's no benefit to sending humans in outer space. Like, maybe no. the International Space Station, maybe a little bit there. Anywhere else, it's just utterly pointless. When even sending, utterly like, a, a human to, what, to Mars, that's going to take, like, oh, that's stupid. What is it, like, a, how many days is it? Oh, it's like a year. To get, oh, to get to Mars. I think so, yeah. Well, maybe it's nearly it's a year, it's under a year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's stupid. Yeah, it's you don't send a human to Mars. But that's what Star Trek does. We have to do that. Oh, Star Trek that's is... What... <laughs> I like Star Trek, but it's very not feasible. It's They're not, yeah, it's not good ideas, ideas, but yes. Now, Star Wars, there's a bastion of scientific truth. But see, how do you make a TV show where it's just robots going off into space? There's um, no connection there. You no. can't have any emotional attachments. That's why we need the cyberpunk series. There's no, been no cyberpunk TV show. We could do that about oh. going venturing into space. Anyway, I think we're veering off topic. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Okay, first complete millimeter scale computing system to be implanted in the eye! Which eye? Uh, one. Oh! Visual. Okay! That was a bum joke. <laughs> oh, that was uh, funnier in my man. head. <laughs> <laughs> Your jokes were better before. I so. know, I know. I'm, I'm not into dad years. jokes, I know. I went okay. utterly offensive in the other ones, but <laughs> now I'm trying to go dad joke. Yeesh. Okay. This is a prototype implantable eye pressure monitor for glaucoma patients and is believed to contain the first complete millimeter scale computing system. So it has everything built into it. And it even has oh, a tuning okay. frequency for a wireless communication as well. Oh yeah. And it's literally a millimeter size. That so, was, yeah, like, oh, oh my god, you've got the picture there of over yeah. a penny. And there's like, yeah, over a penny. It's like incredibly, incredibly small. Like this is the start of oh, wow. millimeter size computing and this is the start of ubiquitous computing. Just computers just everywhere. Like in your clothes, just sensing everything. Because it your, connects to the in net. Your phone, in, yeah. It connects to the net. It's got a oh. wireless... Didn't uh. it say wireless? Or... Finding the right frequency... Ooh, I don't know. Ooh, okay. So it may not be wireless yeah. right yet, but still. It's it's a bit... Yeah. Low power microprocessor. Um, 
A pressure sensor, a memory, a thin film battery, a solar cell, and a wireless radio with an a antenna solar cell? that can transmit data to an external reader that would be near held oh, near the Oh, okay. So it's, it's not yeah. like a wireless device, but it can actually still transmit going through. And it's got yeah. a wireless solar cell. It's got a solar cell. It's got a solar cell and a thin film battery. Holy and it is balls. one cubic millimeter. That is incredibly small. My god. This is brilliant. Um, to keep the battery charged, it requires exposure to 10 hours of indoor light each day or 1.5 hours of sunlight. You can do and that. You can store up to a week's worth of information. Hells yeah. Like, we're getting the there. We're getting there. This is fantastic. <laughs> the beginning of nanites and all of that. I mean, you start slowly yeah, just putting put them everywhere. In. Yeah. Yeah. You help out all the, the, the crippled people until you cross that threshold, which I can't wait to actually reach, where actually being like, you know, losing your eyes or losing a limb or something actually means yes. you'll be more able. All right. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, it'll be better. Yeah, like actually, the, uh, the 2020 vision thing we've been trying out Exactly, lately. Yeah. exactly. We put up an eye chart in our house and we've been getting everyone who comes through the house to actually test their vision. And people with glasses have really bad vision. Yeah, they who do. Who the fuck it, man? Like, I know. But it's what, incredible. <laughs> what did annoy me, though, was uh, I had 2020 vision, checking it out, or a little bit better because I could read a few letters on the one underneath, but I don't know what that means. I'm bragging. Yeah. <laughs> but one guy with actual glasses on, he could read like it nearly. Uh, could read the E in one. In yeah. Oh, he, 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 I'm talking about Nitin. He went really well reading down like two more. Oh, with glasses. With glasses. Yeah, so, yeah he went beyond us. Yeah. I know. He went way beyond us, like two levels under. I was totally like, cyborg. Yeah. Yeah, that's like cyborg with, with just right basic there. glasses. Yeah, with glasses. <laughs> like shit balls. I need glasses if I can read that much better. Yeah. But I, I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, what's I, the, what's the I'm glad for that to actually get to the millimeter things. We're getting there. Uh, next one. Next one. Um, what, what's our singularity topic again? Uh, free. So you're ending. Okay, fantastic. My one is a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic thing. It's about trains and how loud they are when they go by. <laughs> no, that would be really boring. We should get more <laughs> shimpagan. <laughs> we should. Here we go. Excellent. Mine is about Microsoft Research. And here's my cup as well. Okay. <laughs> Mine's about Microsoft Research. They've uh, been using the Kinect. Like so. And uh, they have been actually trying out these new interfaces. Their actual key thing is it's a seven minute long video with Stevie B. He's fantastic. Uh, actually, Stevie B. Stevie B. <laughs> They've been oh, actually oh, saying <laughs> what's going to happen post touch screen. And I think that's already kind of oh, happened with right. the Kinect a little bit, but that was the whole uh, over overriding goal. Anyway, fantastic video, you should definitely check it out. But some of the highlights is this fantastic ability to actually display two separate images to different people or to different eyes. So let's just say we were looking yeah. at, say, your computer right there. Okay. The video camera at the top could actually detect both of our heads right. and display a totally different image to me and a totally different image to you. And yeah. they actually do this in a demonstration as a teapot spinning around. One guy sees a teapot, one guy, and the camera moves across and it morphs into a skull. An actual fully detailed, amazing skull. Oh, on the one screen. On the one screen. Okay. So you don't need to worry about it. And then of course you move that a little bit further. Were they, were they using the, uh, the, where the screens kind of got that, uh, holographic type, like one thing this way, one thing that way? I don't or think was it, so. I think it was, uh, well it had to have been. Cause I, I watched it too. Yeah, it was yeah. like, he was using some LED, like he had a wedge. Yes. <laughs> some <laughs> wedge. wedge. It was like, this it's, like a, it's like a light wedge. Refracting property. Yeah. yeah. Like put light in and it comes up. Yeah. Weird. So it had to be something like that, but you could actually adjust the focal distance and all of that, depending if you just wanted two eyes. Cause that's the obvious right. next step that they show. You could have 3d with just one image display, one eye, one eye image display to that. Cause the camera looks at you yeah. or you can widen it. So playing split three split screen games actually becomes <laughs> Realistic because you can both play on the same screen. See, I watched that. And I, and the cool thing that I just saw was just the uh, the touchless stuff. Basically, sensing movement above a screen or yes. outside of the screen, so you don't have to actually physically touch a surface. Well, did you see with that, the actual screen? They had the camera behind it, so you'd actually have the screen here, and you wanted to interact with it. Yeah, they actually had it. So I want to interact with my laptop right here. I just actually move my hand, and it goes back and forth. They had a mouse spinning. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, the mouse And so the it just goes like yeah. that. Like, I don't need to actually worry about, like, you know, the screen or anything there because there's a camera behind it. I just interact with yeah. the screen just like that and it can detect the Z dimension as well so you can go through. Like, this stuff here is massive. Like, you know, this is pre, pre, pre alpha type stuff, but yeah. it's incredible what they've actually well, come. What would you do with this stuff? Well, see, I'm not sure. Like, I, I mean, glass displays. I heard Starbucks, actually. There's one store in Starbucks right now. I remember last week I spoke about AMOLEDs. Yeah, and screens, yeah. yeah, and uh, so how they're transparent, you can actually put stuff on there. Yep. What they've now done in Starbucks in, I think it's England, I'm not sure. 
they've actually put it in glass and uh, people just walking by can actually play games with their hands on the glass. Oh, right. That was on Singularity Hub. I think it was, yes. So, yeah. And it was uh, absolutely incredible. I mean, that could be actually one thing there. And last thing. But these are all ads, though. Just give me something like... Well, cool, that's not advertising. Well, one thing, and this leads like, into the singularity topic, but one thing is actually using the uh, actual screen as a window. So as you move your head, it's like you're actually looking through a window. So say I've got windows here. As I move my head, I actually am seeing a different image. Yeah, yeah, and I saw it that, one. that. And, and it, it, it gives exactly. this whole free, 3D exactly. visualization type thing, which is pretty I mean, epic. Well, we're already speaking about that. I mean, eventually, obviously, screen's going to be cheap enough to plaster your whole walls. You can have yeah. whole windows there. Let's say you're working in a, well, let's say you're working underground and you've got, like, say, all these windows here. You can actually display it like a realistic window, yeah. displaying, like, I don't know, Tugu Scalper or something. You know, it's something yeah. really cool. I like Tugu Scalper. I think that's great. And the guy was actually talking about augmented reality with that stuff as well. Yes. Like overlaying it on stuff. And this is this is the point I'd like to mention too. Um, in the last few days, I've been showing people off that that corning video we covered last mm. week, the week before that, well, the week before that, yeah. And I was I was basically, as I tend to do with my whole, hey, look at the future, how how cool is it? And I'm like, well, it's gonna be really really soon, like probably in the next five years. And everyone's like, oh no, it's like maybe fifty years. I'm like, no no, the tech's already here now, like right now, it's literally here right now. They've made it. It's in stores or in labs. And they're like, oh I don't know. Have you heard of the Surface? And like. No, I haven't heard of the Surface. Like, oh my god! And they're like YouTubing, you know, you know, Microsoft Surface and show them off. They're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome if you did that. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, my point is, like, I think there's a lot of people out there that don't even know what's happening in the labs. Yeah. Like any of this experimental stuff. Like any of the, if they don't know what the Surface is, then how are they going to know what all this touchscreen? stuff can actually lead towards if they don't yeah, know yeah, what you know, if they don't know what AMOLED screens are like with all the flexible screens. Yeah, yeah, of course. And you show them demos where they're like, they've actually made them. This is not sci-fi. They've actually they have working yeah. prototypes. The yeah. only problem now is just getting them down to a cost effective sort of uh, manufacturing process. Indeed. Where you can actually make it ubiquitous and get out there. That's why I love looking at the Kinect stuff so much. I know I, a lot of my stories yeah. recently have been about the Kinect, but I really feel that it's one of the most revolutionary technologies yeah. that come along in a long time. Well, I think our, our big prediction with that is it's going to be the, the TV interface. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be like That's... one of the interfaces that, I mean, touch screens are great actually touching it there, but yeah. it'd just be great to... I, I don't think it's going to be for computers. No, because it's more of it's the same thing with mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Like, why would you need a touchscreen for a mouse and keyboard? Fuck that. Yeah. Like, it, it'll probably be a secondary input that would be cool. Like, if you wanted to do something, like, I don't know. Yeah. Say, say watching a movie on your computer. In yeah, your yeah, bed. you're lying like, in bed and stuff, rather than using your iPhone or, like, yeah. just actually going next. I think it'll be a secondary input, but for TV, that's, that's definitely where it's going to be. Yeah. Um, sorry, kind of hijacked your... No, no, that's, that's great. Well, that's uh, pretty much the end. Uh, check out this video. It's actually pretty cool. It's only seven minutes, and uh, you can actually see what Microsoft's working on right now. And uh, yeah. It's pretty good. Can we cover this one? Uh, this is an article by Kevin Kelly. Who's he? Kevin Kelly, he was... Um, I think he's only... Claimed, Founder of Wyatt. Yeah, I think that's his only like claim... Like, his yeah. historical, like, hey, I've done this. I think, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it, and he's incredible. But Watch yeah, he has thoughts. some amazing thoughts as well. He's he's very much along the same lines. Uh, um, he's influenced me more than Kurzweil. Yeah. Kur Kurzweil is like okay, but insane. Uh, he Kevin has, Kelly's actually done to it. Yeah, he has um, done. Yeah, he's done it relatively. Work, but he has work. very very technical in depth Aye. articles that <laughs> are kind of difficult to understand. Yeah. Because it's just a dude putting his thoughts out in a digital paper. But um. And, and you should go read his book. What, is it? what technology wants? Yes, really cool book. We still need to get that. We haven't still, ordered it yet. We need to get that one. We need to get Everclouds. Everclouds. Need the to guy actually that. contacted us. What yeah. was his name? Okay, uh, someone soon. Ross. But anyway, thank, thanks to Kai we'll, we'll get in touch with you soon. Somehow. Yeah. Um, so anyway, <laughs> this talk is this talk. This article is about um, forecasting the Kindle, the Amazon's Kindle, and its price drop. And they've actually been doing this since like 2010 or 2009. And apparently, this guy right. noted it. Um, and the prediction is that looking at extrapolating the price drop of the Kindle over time, by November this year, the Kindle will be free. Shit, well, you should put this graph up, like, right now. That, that That's... <laughs> the Kindle will be free. Like, obviously it won't be free-free. It'll be like, you know, uh, there's talks of, like, it'll, it'll be like a, a phone bundle where you get a, a free Kindle if you pay for a subscription fee to something, or... You'll get a free Kindle if you do something or other or something like that. Exactly. But it just means that the production price will have gone down so much that they can just literally give them away and make money off other stuff. Now, before you guys actually start thinking that, oh, it'll just start tapering off and curving to like, you know, something normal. 
What did Jeff Bezos say? Didn't uh, Kevin Kelly speak to Jeff Bezos? Yeah, he said, uh, he said, I've mentioned this to forecast to all kinds of folks. In August 2010, I had the chance to point it out to Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon. Uh, he merely smiled and said, oh, you noticed that? And then smiled again. See, that's, Love it. That means Love Amazon... It. Love it. Love it. That means they literally... Because from their perspective, they don't care about the hardware. They're no. a book company. Yes. They want to they wanna sell books but just really quickly. They want to do, like, essentially the iTunes model for books. Yes. You, ch you pay, like, you know, what, a couple of bucks for a book and you get it instantly downloaded and you start reading oh, it on your Kindle. On your Kindle. Which your Kindle is free and they just hand them out like chips. Like Exactly. Like, people will start going, that they'll sell subscriptions. You say, subscribe to the Sydney Morning Herald. And uh, that's how yeah. we people. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> you subscribe to that. They say, hey, look, get a Kindle if you sign up for two years. You're like, yeah. fuck yeah, I'll do that. I'll sign up for two years and get a free Kindle. And you can subscribe up to other things as well. Actually, uh, uh, Michael Arrington, I know how much you hate him, mm. of TechCrunch actually put out a rumor saying that what they might do is give a free Kindle for every Prime customer of Amazon. Yeah, okay. I'm guessing Prime customer something. They uh, pay like 70, 79 bucks a year. They get free two-day shipping. They get free unlimited streaming movies. Yeah, they were just getting other stuff so, as well. The, with that, they could they could you know kick ass in the whole book spectrum and also you know compete with Netflix a yeah. hell of a lot. Which One reason we don't know about Amazon Prime too much is because they don't really allow it to Australia. We yeah, can't actually ship a lot of things here from no Amazon. No, Australia. Bit of a pain. So everything we say on this show is very backwards. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Pain. <laughs> we don't live in the States. If anyone wants to pay for us to go over to the States, we would happily accept your offer. Maybe. Just, you, you guys maybe. are about to collapse. <laughs> Oh, and that, Sorry, yeah. and that, yeah, yeah. And we'd probably only get jobs as, like, male models or something, because... Oh, definitely. I mean, come on, the Australian accent and this. I know. That's the only job we'd get. I mean, mm. we don't really have any other skills apart from our... No. ...devilishly good looks. No, that's it's, it. It's all, it's all we got going for hey, us. Hey, I'm going to go for Girls Gone Wild. I'm just going <laughs> to dress up as a different girl each week and just rotate through. And just show you... T <laughs> yeah, it's straight. Wow. It's a good method. It is. Well, anyway, this kind of uh, leads on to <laughs> yeah. the singularity topic, doesn't it? Yeah. Woo! Free. Let's talk about free things. Actually, Kevin Kelly has a... I remember he had the ultimate article on free. Oh, really? I have no idea where it is now, though. Oh, bummer, we should have read it before actually doing this yeah, discussion. Yeah, probably. Maybe if I just search for free. Free. Anyway, we want to know... what The, the idea of free is... Uh, the free. Well, a, a, everything's becoming free now. Like, a, anything, any information product, anything like that... You can get for free. Like I'm, I'm not going to hide it here that people pirate, people stream. Who pays for movies? Who actually pays for music? Like Groove Shark, Groove Shark, ultimate example for that. We were just playing yeah. Ghostbusters let's right not, then. Let's explain what we do now already. Sure. Do you want to take the lead? Sure. And I found this article. I'll put it up too. Okay. The free one. Um, we right now. Okay. It's it's clear like all our age group, our entire demographic right now, just pirate everything. No if, one buys a DVD. If it is information, Who buys it, is, a DVD? it is free. Yes. Yeah. If, information God, is have free. Have you seen how much DVDs are still like? I know. Like it, there's still at least twenty five bucks here. Who the? I, I, used, fucking, I used, used to buy DVDs movie. like you know three four years ago, and I I had quite a collection. I've got still quite yeah. a collection, and then it just clicked in me. It's like why? Why am I doing this? Yes. Well, I used to pirate movies back before there was too much to download. Like oh, yeah. burn and. Transfer by a post. It was fun. Um, anyway, <laughs> are you trying to make that sound sexual or something? No, it's just like it's hardcore. Oh, right. Back in the day, you know, hardcore piracy. But yeah, anyway, these days everyone just pirates everything. But I mean, th that's such an old paradigm. Like, yes. it, it's such an old model. And it's starting to change now. Like, even the whole like copyright things on YouTube videos yeah. on different countries. How fucking stupid is that? Why oh are my you God. limiting it to different countries? There is no countries it's online. We're one global society right now. It's in Make it all one global copyright system. Yes. And copyright God. needs to change as well. Yeah. But the, the idea of free going here that no one, well, very few people have actually started to capitalize on it. Groove Shark, I think, is a fantastic yep. invention. I mean, if you look at Napster, people are like, hey, you can download anything for free. Shut it people down, freak yeah. the fuck out. Now, Groove Shark's doing the exact same thing. And but everyone loves it. Everyone loves it, but they don't. It, no one cares. I mean, and Hulu, uh, Hulu, yeah, for TV all shows. the others, yeah. Uh, I mean, you, I think you, I think we're gonna actually go one step. Well, it, mm. Would you actually? Oh, I was gonna say, like, we we use other services. I don't think I'll mention them because they might. Oh, why not? Well, okay. Well, maybe not the, the download program, but Ice Films. Icefilms.info Ice Films, yeah. is a fantastic streaming site. If you guys stream yeah, whatever whatever you want, any movie, any, any in TV HD show, even if you yeah, want. yeah. Uh, Icefilms.info, check it out. And no ad, and no, and that's the thing I was going to point out. Like, do you think services like Hulu, where they actually force you to watch ads 
either at the start or end or in the I mid think that's okay. middle. Do you think people? Yeah, will they put? I, I watch John Stewart with ads because he's got a better service. Like if I go to the Daily Show dot com, yeah, I'll just chuck it up because it's easier than going even through Ice Films and stuff. Because literally, yeah. all I do the Daily Show dot com hit play. If there's a thirty second ad, whatever, I'm a lazy fuck. That's great. Yeah. I could watch the Daily Show on Ice Films and actually not have to worry about ads, but there are more clicks. I'm think- that averse to clicks. Hate <laughs> clicks. You think well, what the what the hell is the problem with all these these companies? Like you think actually uh, giving their like play the show on their TV shows, their cable networks, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But then afterwards, just give it all online free, like slap some ads on there, yeah. and then you get all the metrics of like okay, how long did a person watch it for? Who's watching it? Where are they watching it from? How did they get here? What parts do they like about it? You can even prompt them for like different comments and reviews and yeah. surveys like. But again, that's sure not... you could sell better advertising with those stats. Well, that's it. Like, how do you sell advertising? Because that's the, the key thing that we are operating at a different perspective here, I think. Because we're only focusing on the content we get yeah, back we on. We, we want the shows. Whereas, whereas they want money. They, yeah, the people making the shows, they don't give a shit about the show. They pick, a, they pick a demographic they want to target. They make a show that uses that demographic. Best example right now, Big Bang Theory, How I Met Your Mother. Two easy examples. <laughs> New York yuppies. Nerds. And so, hey, let's just go for that. Even though nerds hate Big Bang Theory. I'm, I'm a big fan, but anyway. <laughs> and so they're like, hey, let's target that demographic. And they get some stuff there. And they sell ads. They don't care about the program. They just want to sell ads. Yep. Get viewership. So, okay, well, we should just... Where does it go? Finish up this thing. Where... Well, just this one. Oh, where, okay. Where is it going to go? Where do you... Do you think just ubiquitous, just... You can just access from any device, yes, anywhere... Definitely. Free streaming content, content yeah. of any TV show, yep. any song, music... Yeah. Anything. TV show, movie, and even stuff that is like considered premium. Like, I mean, there are pay sites out there that are actually working quite well. Yeah. But what is weird with all, all of those the, premium things and stuff? Ah, uh, well, no, I was thinking more like okay. uh, videos and stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, I guess a good example is say uh, porn. Porn's a great example. Like, you know, a lot of people like there's lots of free porn out there, but like, you know, actually people pay for specific things, and it's like, okay, yeah, not me personally, but I know a lot of those <laughs> sites make like you know a ton. Yeah, yeah. And even the stuff with like actually pirating it, it makes it harder. Or Steam. Steam's a fantastic example about yeah. games. People will pay if it's easier. Convenience. Convenience. They pay for convenience. That's it. Like I watch that's ads why on the Daily Show. Stores exist. Yes. Like Seven <laughs> Eleven and all that. It's convenient. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch ads extra. on the Daily Show. I'll, I'll pay for games on Steam because it's easier. Yeah. So yes, there'll be unlimited streaming. There'll be any music, any TV show, any digital content. But completely it completely free. They could actually, yeah, completely free. Or if it's easier to actually like pay for it, then people will do that. Whatever's easiest. But you, you'll make money uh, via different means. Mm. Yes. Well, at least that's that's what it will force. It'll force different business models to come about. Yes. And you're kind of starting to see them now. I mean, like we said, Steam and iTunes is kind of a little bit of a different business model. But yeah, I think you'll need something a lot more intelligent beyond yeah. that. I mean, when everything's free, like wh- like when you can access any music or game. As easy as iTunes and Steam allow it, but completely free? Yeah. Then what happens? How to... Well, that's the big question, isn't it? That's where you get into <laughs> the idea of the attention economy. That's where you get into the idea of actually measuring how people use things and how different stuff happens. That There's no system yeah. out there. Like, we spoke with um, the Genesis Project and all of that, and, like, they're, they're different thoughts, but that's not really along the same line, that there has to be a new system. True. Well, the other thing we, we should mention after that one is... um free in the physical con- economy as well. Yes. Oh, physical okay. Because yeah, yeah. we only mentioned uh, digital goods as being free, which is an obvious... Well, yeah, anything back. that's made of information can be free because it doesn't yep. cost anything to replicate it. Yep. But see, then even with... Once uh, 3D printing starts coming into play a lot mm-hmm. more, uh, I mean, it, it'll be... You've seen, like, there's even organ printing now. Like, it's going to be free to print off your own organs if you mm-hmm. need them. And, you know, free to print off any device that you possibly want. Like, even the Kindle thing. Yeah. If, if, if physical devices become free... Because then... it's converting it into an information thing, like 3D printers and all of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It converts it's, it again it's driven, into information. It becomes yeah. free because it's driven by information paradigms. I just thought of something. What? You know what actually might happen? The same way that, you know, where we now pay a monthly subscription to the internet. We pay like 60 bucks a month and get our internet like that. Yep. That might actually be the same way with 3D printers and all of that. You pay, say, $60 a month and you get your goop. You get your universal matter that actually it's allows you to, <laughs> it allows you to transfer, like, you say I get, you know, you one ton it. of, uh, let's say, well, let's say 100 kilograms of, like, matter a month hmm. and that costs me $60 and that's just piped in. And so then I've got my universal fluid or universal matter that I can ma- morph into anything else. That costs right. me $6 a month. Then people start progressing through, hey, I can offer you 200 kilograms <laughs> a month 
of it for <laughs> goop for 200 so, kilos. I don't think it's going to go that way. I think it's going to go the way Shapeways has already set it up. Right. In the sense that people will design different um, items, physical items that you can print out, and they'll sell them in digital form, yeah. but then you print them out. And then they'd have to deliver it to you as well. We just print out at home eventually. But that's what I mean. Like printing out at home, you still need to like, actually pay for the plastic yeah. or the goop going in. But I think that's more. That'd just be a minor thing. That'd, that'd be like paying for, say, uh, I don't know what's ink. Simple. Yeah, ink. <laughs> like it, it's it'll be an expensive, you know, bitch of a thing. But I'm not sure. I think this could actually think be it, a subscription uh, thing. I think that you could actually do a business model on this. You provide the goop. You provide. <laughs> oh, well, what's a better word? You provide the matter. <laughs> I like that. I like the, the word goop. Map yeah, you provide the goop. And uh, goop for you sale. Can do it for com. 60. You, you get 100 kilograms. You can universally create 100 kilograms worth of stuff. Speaking of Star Trek earlier on, like, you know, the universal constructor, that's Dale Sex. Um, the morphing shit that they have to create tea. Earl Grey. The <laughs> morphing shit to create tea. Well, John Luke Picard always drinks Earl Grey hot. It's great. Captain <laughs> Picard. Uh, but you, you'll have a limit to that. And that's why I think that once we actually get 3D printers, it. Rests right. on quite a few factors. But. Okay. So what were we talking about before that? Mm -hmm. They did uh, information and physical and how, what if both become free. Oh, then yeah. attention economy. Attention economy. The idea is, oh, another thing with, sorry, with physical as well is uh, automation and robotics is kind of like propelling that whole... Oh, of course. Everything's free because they just make Everything is becoming connected as information. Everything should just be represented as information and then if it's represented as information, it becomes free. And then, if everything becomes free, that's the kind of error of abundance that everyone keeps talking about. Yes. And well, if you have an error of abundance, then that leads into... Or you, should you say... <laughs> no, no, what well, I was just going to say as the token economist, uh, it's a, our, <laughs> our whole society is based on scarcity. And that's why we don't have a model for piracy and all of that right now, because that's based on abundance. Uh, and so that's why we need to start actually creating that new model, that new theory uh, for abundance. Abundance. And people are speaking about it. No one has a good theory. No one has a good yeah. theory. I, I, you hear out there about different ideas, but yeah, attention economy is probably the closest because our one scarce resource right now exactly. is our attention. Yeah. What, if 24 you actually, hours in a day. That's exactly. All we've got. If you actually start analyzing and thinking that we have a valuable resource in our computational power, in our yeah. thinking, in our cognitive ability, by actually getting yeah. us to connect to an idea or a thought of yours, yeah. we can process it and then feed back. You want to actually measure that. Say you're big, uh, no, no, that's not, not that. <laughs> Let's say you produce content and you get a million people. That's a million people computing your thought. Maybe only a few of them will actually create anything based on that thought, but still you're getting, say, a good few hundred, probably a thousand or more, actually releasing information based on what they've computed about your yeah. thought. And that means you're getting free computation. You're getting free analysis, free stuff there. That's valuable. For now, I actually had a thought then, beyond the free, where everything is free, they should start paying you to actually consume that content. Definitely. That's definitely, the whole idea. Definitely. Just, pay for your computation. Yeah. Like everything we upload to Facebook now, that is valuable content. So valuable. That's why they're worth 70, 80 billion dollars. Yes. It's because we keep giving them all this information about ourselves completely free, which then then they just then, you know, use that information we're to start advertisers. We're computing again. We're, we're the giving, product. We're giving <laughs> to the machine. The machine wants our information. Machine, obviously technology, if you've watched this before, but machines technology. Like we anything we give to the machine. Machine, anything we record, anything we put online, any way that we interact and physically give, we should get some input to the machine. Like we should get something of some sense. Even a few statuses yes. and uploading pictures, like that's a lot. We're giving a lot to the machine yeah. right now. Like you know, doing this video podcast. This is very rare. Most people don't do this, but yeah. there should be actually like you know something there because there's we're giving to the machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But hey, try try and go to the you know the RAAA and say, well, in the future, you know. Recording studios and artists are actually going to pay us to listen yeah. to their songs. <laughs> it's I'll be like, a... um, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, but no, because we're spending three minutes of our valuable time listening to your particular song. Yeah. And we could be listening to, what, the other million songs that have been created exactly. today. Exactly. We're listening to your message where we could be listening to anyone else's. And that comes yeah. in cross with any message. Like, advertising and content is going to be so blurred. Yeah. yeah there's going to be no, there's no, there's there's no, no difference. difference. Yeah. yeah. Because you just provide what the individual wants. Yeah, the and that's information what you they want. Because it's just like any... It, it's a drug, literally. Yeah. Information is a drug for us. Like, yes. You give us the right information that we want, and there's a better drug. <laughs> exactly. It's like you, you... Let's say, like, you give us a story about, you know, whatever, like, fashion or whatever, and that's like, that's like you know... You don't care. That's like coffee. 
You yeah. know, you give us a bit more about something else, technology, that's a bit like alcohol, you know. You give us something about hive mind and like singularity, like you're it's up at fucking like, coke, man. Yeah, you're getting up there, like LSD <laughs> coke level. It's, it's getting no, pretty I've never crazy. tried coke, so I <laughs> <laughs> So you know what I mean. Yeah. And, and that's what it's going to go to. I mean, that's the nature of free, that it's a, it's a reversing paradigm right now. It's uh, it used to be that we pay people for information. Now the the techies, the the geeky yeah. people, aren't paying for it unless it's convenient, and it's going to start shifting. I think that it's going to keep on shifting, shifting, shifting. It's not going to be a pretty transition though. Like any transition, is pretty. Really, we're giving out stuff for free now. Like we don't get True. anything. Every, tons of people on YouTube are like there'll be less production values. Like don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah. How I Met Your Mother and Big Bang and all of them are actually they have very low production values. Say Hollywood, like big movies and all of that. That'll be less. Yeah. And good. Because I mean, actually spending well, I mean, once hundreds the, once of millions the, of dollars on a movie is incredibly wasteful. Well, once the tech gets better, like we can have dancing chickens and stuff. I and know. Like that time we made that dancing chicken and it cost us fifty thousand dollars. That was too much. That was, yeah, it kind of put us back a bit. Shouldn't have put that money in. Family Guy reference. Really worth it. <laughs> Good fun. Anyway, um, thanks for yeah. listening. I guess. Yeah. 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 Free. Here's to um, number fifty. Let's fill up and do a final cheers before going. Yeah. Oh, can you pass me the wine? Oh, wait, you've run out. Yeah, I know. You may as well just drink from the bottle. Ah! <laughs> no, I'm going to be classy and civilized. Okay, we should swish first. All I can say is thank you very much for allowing us to do 50 episodes and not being, like, totally horrible and saying we're douchebags. I mean, don't get me wrong, we are douchebags, but for not saying it, I respect that. I mean, we're still not getting many views, but it's oh, been fun. Man. It has been fun, hasn't <laughs> it's it? It's worth it. Anyway, cheers to 50. Cheers, to the future. I'll catch you later. I'm Tristan Grace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Next was. Catch you next week. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Ow! Welcome to Hive 45! A weekly discussion about the future impact of this week's world and tech news. I am Tristan Grace. Give it up! Woo! 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 So let's get into it. This week has been spectacular. There is beer. There is everything else. And it is going to be fun.